Hello Tamers, welcome back to an event with me, again swiftly. So, this is going to be a quick-ish rundown of what's happened this week, as you may not be up to date, I haven't really what's going on in the world. This is being recorded on day of release for Europe, and technically the rest of the world, with uh, it's, it's just a shit show. So, yeah, I haven't received anything myself yet, the person that I am getting from has had COVID, or at least a test positive COVID in his family, so, fingers crossed, I should receive some more next week. Yes, that does mean if you're coming to the podcast tomorrow that I don't actually have any product to show you or do you think we're always going to do a little bit of a, a fun time opening session with you guys while we're recording the podcast, but sadly, can't now. But either way, podcast will still go on tomorrow. And hopefully you guys enjoy our live version. Come down and join us. Have fun. I'll leave a link in the description. Probably put one up on the screen as well. So, yeah, let's crack on with this. So, for the first thing swing you may have missed, we are getting a premium pack 2 already. Now, it wasn't called Premium Pack 2, but what we know so far is we're going to get the lovely War Greymon playmat, as well as possibly a pack, a single pack, of Battle of Omni. Now, I know a lot of people have issues with this because of the symbol already on it. That's the Omega symbol, not the Omni symbol, because Omni doesn't have a symbol. At least I don't think Omni has a symbol, but either way, that's why people are upset with this. Also, it's meant to be like $33, so... Uh, in English, that's like £26, so for a playmat plus a pack of cards, that probably isn't too bad, actually. But I think if we're going to have to pay the same prices that we did for the last set of mats, which is the mats and sleeves, that was roughly 40 and Let's face it, that's not a good price, especially when America was paying, I think, 35 for their playmat and sleeves, plus it's free delivery. Yeah, it doesn't look so good for us over here in Europe. So, I don't really want to be paying anything more than 30 for this if possible, unless we start getting more packs. As you've noticed, I did put a few more packs here, but I think it's probably one pack and then maybe a playmat. The only thing I th can think of that they're doing this for is they might want to do a promotion where it's like, if you spend, let's say, £30 in the shop, which would cover the cost of this mat and the pack of cards, then you'd be given a tournament pack for free or maybe a battle pack as a added extra. This isn't something I'm suggesting. This is something that they do in Yu-Gi-Oh! currently with the Lost Art promotion. Where for £30, you have the chance of getting one of, I believe, five at any given time of Lost Art promotions, depending on when they are released to when they are obtained. It seems so awkward currently in the UK where I'm sitting now. I've done a 100 mile radius. There's literally four um, else official card ass shops. I've spoken to a couple of them. Oh, sorry, I've spoken to three of the four. One doesn't go back to me yet. Two have said basically the same thing like, hey, look. We're going to give them to our locals, which is fair enough. But we're going to sell them, but technically we're selling them to them. Which again, it's fair enough. Uh, Bandai said it's in their rules that they can. I'm just glad they're getting out there. Obviously the issue is, some of these cards are very meta, or can be very meta, depending on how the decks turn out. So, it's going to be very awkward to get hold of some of these meta deck cards. So, I, I see that the current start we had to this is going to be how it's going to stay for a long time. Like, if you want to be part of this community, it's going to be really difficult for you to be part of this community unless you're able to spend a hell of a lot of money on secondary market, which, let's face it, you probably shouldn't. And two, they really need to sort out how they're doing this situation with their official stores, as well as how they're going to do price support, because price support already looks dreadful in terms of the quantity of it. But from what I've seen, the quantity of just base stock in... The mass market of Europe seems uh, dreadfully short. UK is at like 6% of what I've heard from people saying like overall distribution is at 6%. Europe was meant to release on the 29th of Fed January. You know, with, with two weeks later, uh, nothing's happened. Like, it's it's pretty bad, but let's ignore the uh, the current situation. Let's go to the next one. Cardas needs you. So Cardas is actually asking for your assistance. They want you to go onto their website if you are a Cardas holder. I'm still waiting for mine, as you may have known, I did try to do, start a business up this year. I've tried to do all my stuff for Asmodee, D and I'm trying to do my stuff officially through Cardass, and I probably will go through the Pokemon League at some point to try and get everything done. For now, I don't have a pass, I did do this like three or four weeks ago, so I might hear something in the future. But until then, I, I can't, and 99.9% of the people who are possibly going to listen to this can't either, as it's specifically just for retailers. But if you have a local store that is part of the Cardass team, especially if they are like doing D Dragon Ball Z already as well, so they will already have a Cardass account, just tell them to do a, the survey. The worst case scenario is nothing happens. The best case scenario is they actually listen and go, actually, you know what, we did really screw up. We do need to look at the numbers. That's, that's all we can really do is just help them out where we can. 
next downloadable playmat. So if you guys have been noticing, every now and again they throw out these nice artworks and playmats. Personally, they do do some very nice artworks. Do do. But you might be looking at this and go like, this is a bit of a strange looking artwork. Well, these three boss monsters originally came from set two. Galamon is currently in 1.0. Shine Greymon has his artwork on the box of 1.0, but didn't isn't turning up until 1.5. And Ulfos Vigramon is in 1.5. So these are all originally two well set two box monsters, which is why they're all here. I think it looks great. You know my favourite is in the middle, so I ain't gonna complain. And now you're probably thinking, what else has this discovered this week? Well actually we had our first limited cards this week so you're probably thinking what do you mean by limited so if you play magic or you play pokemon you know something called rotations and rotations are a set amount of time between something's release until it cannot long be played in standard format so i believe pokemon is two full years or i think it's the set before the two years before the set of Pokemon Worlds, although occasionally they do change it so it overlaps because of how it, it's weird. So, yeah, Pokemon is a bit weird because it does kind of change when it starts its uh, set limit some years, just because I think of how playsets work or how some of the decks get affected by it being taken out. And I think Mag I heard Magic was like three years, but I think it also might be two years because that makes more sense because they follow the same format of it essentially. But a lot of Japanese card games don't follow a formatting system. They follow a restriction system, which is a ban list or a forbidden list or a restriction list, which is going to be. So no cards have actually been restricted on this list already. But we do have two lovely cards that are actually being limited. So you might think, it's that damn Omnimon. It's that goddamn Omnimon ruining everyone's fun again. Going around, deleting people, stabbing people with his big sword. Incorrect, my friends. So actually, the biggest issue we have is going to be in green. So as you all know, green is my favourite colour as of set 1.5. I think green just takes over. It's very, 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 very good as soon as it hits 1.5. Four, I don't really think it adds too much, but it's, it brings to us anyway. It'll bring us our next set of decks, which are very useful to build the better decks. But green is already looking very good as of next set, which for most of us should be middle of, middle of March, but where everything's going may be beginning of April. But the two cards we're going to discuss today is the ultimate level Agramon and Hidden Potential Discovered. Now, a lot of people ask, why are these getting banned? Well, well, not banned, but they're getting limited. And the reason is because level 5 Agramon lets you tap one of your monsters, suspend one of your monsters, and you get a free devolution into an ultimate. And then if you have hidden potential discovered, and you have an extra monster on your side of the field, well, you can just unsuspend that one, sorry, suspend that one, and do the same again. While most megas, if you evolve from an ultra, ultimate into a mega, is five or less normally. Some are six, but I think most are like four to five. You just get yourself a free mega. So possibly on turn two, you went from having two or three rookies on your team to having maybe two rookies and a big green boy. Now, they're probably scared and confused by this because I think this can technically cheat you up to a Chaos Mon quite easily. And they're concerned because Agramon level four is awful. Because it costs five to evolve into, which is why you're going to probably not see that one very often in play. But I think Agramon level four, 6 is either a 4 or a 3 cost itself. But yeah, these two cards are just going to enable... I wouldn't say degeneracy, but it's going to enable you to get basically jump to mega level very, very fast. And obviously that, that's concerning to a lot of people. At least with Omnimon, when you are going to that stage, level 7, it does take more than one turn. It does take more than two turns. It does take three to four turns. Like your strategy has to be, I need to get Omnimon on the field. Whereas in green, it's like, well, I had this hand, and everything's pretty cheap in green, and on turn three, I already have a Mega. And on turn four, I have two Megas. And on turn five, I have a Chaosmon, two Megas, 
and a sandwich. So. I guess it's not necessarily fair, but I think that was basically Green's thing. Green green means go. Green means get big fast. Personally speaking, I'm happy that we're having limitations as opposed to bans, but at the same time, I do wish they wouldn't be limiting things like this when you have other cards that are just crushing other decks. With that being said, I've been a Gear Swiftly. Thank you for being here, guys. I don't do this very often, but as usual, like, comment, subscribe. Helps me up a lot. I'm going to put the link into the Twitch here and probably in the description. So, yeah, again, thank you very much for being here. Peace out, love. Yours truly, the Guido. Bye.